So heart disease and stroke numbers are at all-time highs. But bacon consumption, it's never been lower. How does that work? Hey everybody, this is Aaron Wenzel, host of the Concierge Medicine Show. Welcome to episode one. This show is all about the conversations you need to be having with your doctor in 30 minutes or less. So your doctor said that your cholesterol was high, but what does that really mean? And more importantly, what do you need to do about it? By the end of the show, you're going to have the three must have questions that you need to take back to your doctor and have conversations around. And frankly, some of these questions might just save your life. Here's the deal. Stroke, heart attack, these numbers are at all time highs in documented human history. What's more is that we've never consumed less dietary fat and cholesterol ever. How does that happen? Here's some little known truths about cholesterol that you definitely need to know and understand. First, cholesterol is necessary for life. Without it, it is not compatible. It makes hormones, cell walls. Matter of fact, every cell in the human body has the ability to make the cholesterol that it needs to replenish its own supply. But what's more interesting is that the liver has the ability to become a cholesterol factory. In other words, if there's ever any deficiency in the entire body, the liver has the ability to produce all you need and more. So there are two things that we need to talk about. Number one, this idea of where does cholesterol come from? Most people believe that dietary cholesterol is the only place that you get cholesterol. Therefore, controlling dietary intake of cholesterol will yield whatever your blood counts are. The problem is that we're totally, over, uh, total, totally missing this second place that cholesterol is made. It's made in the liver. So you can either eat cholesterol or you make cholesterol. This is really, really important because unless we're asking questions like, well, what would make the liver turn on and what makes the liver turn off? These are really good questions and those are questions that you really need to be asking yourself. The challenge is when you get told that your cholesterol is high from your doctor, you immediately say, oh, well, I guess I should stop eating bacon because bacon has cholesterol. But nobody's ever addressing the liver issue, which is far and away the contributor to your blood levels. The second contributing factor to this cholesterol myth is this lie that we have been told for the past 35 years that there is direct correlation between dietary fat and cholesterol intake and actually being fat and having high cholesterol. It's just not the case. There are other variables at play that you need to understand that are affecting your cholesterol levels and therefore we need to have conversations about this. So the first question that you need to be able to take to your doctor is you got to know your numbers right? So your doctor says your cholesterol is high. Okay. What are my numbers? As you may know, the total cholesterol is a number somewhere between 150 and it can go really, really high. And for most physicians, they'll say if your cholesterol is above 200, you need to try diet and exercise for six months. If not, we're going to put you on a statin. But knowing your total cholesterol is literally, uh, like they say, knowing enough to be dangerous because it actually doesn't tell you anything about what is making up that number. And we really have to understand that total cholesterol represents a whole number of the parts. And what are these parts? Number one is something called HDL. H for high. You want this high cholesterol, this high this HDL as high as possible. I had a private client just last week who had a total cholesterol of 216 and was told that she needed to be on a statin uh, for the past couple of years. When I looked at her HDL, it was 80. 
which for those of you who don't know these numbers, this is about two to three times what the average HDL level is for a woman of her age. And that high HDL was the sole contributing factor to her high total. Her bad cholesterol was actually in the tank. She doesn't have any more risk of heart disease than I don't know, but she's not going to get heart disease because her HDL is so high. You've got to know your HDL. HDL is your good cholesterol. It is directly linked to uh, 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 high levels of HDL are directly correlated with low risk of heart disease. If you've got a low HDL, you're in real trouble. I don't care how low your total cholesterol is. If your HDL is low, you're going to be in trouble. So you got to know what your HDL levels. For men and women, you really want this above 50. The higher, the better, but you've got to get it above 50. And if you're not having conversations with your physician about where is my HDL in relation to a minimum of 50 and what can I be doing to get this raised, we're really missing the mark. So HDL. The second thing we need to look at is triglycerides. The triglycerides are fatty sugars, which again, like HDL, are the only thing amongst your total cholesterol panel that actually have any real value. In other words, with certain numbers, we know what to do. If your triglycerides are high, you are a heart attack waiting to happen. Ideally, we like them under 150. My private clients, I really work very hard to get them under 100. Not just because it makes me feel good, but because these numbers matter. Now, if you happen to be somebody who has a low HDL, remember, we want that as high as possible. This is a heart disease risk. And if you have a high triglyceride, which again is another heart disease risk, this ratio of HDL to triglycerides is probably one of the most important ratios that you will ever come across that you don't know about. You have got to have this conversation with your doc. You've got to know what your ratio is to, from HDL to, triglyc to tri triglycerides. Actually, I should say triglycerides to HDL. And if that ratio of triglycerides to HDL is five or greater, you are in harm's way. You are knocking on the door of a condition that we're calling metabolic syndrome, which I'll dive into, into into another show. But heart disease, diabetes, stroke, these are all the things that you don't want. But when that triglyceride to HDL ratio gets above five, it's a big problem. And I don't care what your total cholesterol is. This is a big deal. The last thing within your cholesterol that you've gotta know is your LDL. L, we like as low as possible. This is the cholesterol that's directly correlated with plaques, the things that rupture and break off into your heart and give you a heart attack or break off into your brain and give you a stroke. But that's not enough either. You've got to go even deeper because it turns out LDL has two different sizes. They have a small dense and a big fluffy. All you need to know is that that small dense is what causes the heart plaque. So when you get your cholesterol panel, do not be satisfied with, well, Jim, you've got high cholesterol. We ought to put you on a statin. Whoa, let me know my numbers. What are my HDL numbers? What are my triglycerides? What is my LDL? And specifically, what are my small dense particles in my LDL? Now, these are not standard tests. You have to ask for them. Please do yourself a favor and ask for these numbers because if you know your numbers, you really know much more about how to take better care of yourself and be healthy, which is why we're here. So the second conversation that I want you to be able to have is this looming question that you've probably been contemplating or you've made a decision already. Should I take a statin or not? Listen. I'm not here to knock the drug uh, companies. I'm not here to knock the class of medicines called statins, but I need to be totally frank with you. These medicines are not without risk. Truth is, every medicine has a risk, and you've got to make a decision whether the benefits outweigh the risk. 
And you need to understand that the data is crystal clear that taking statins is not without risk. There is a direct correlation with diabetes, which you don't want, and Alzheimer's dementia, which you do not want. So there better be a clear indication as to why you're taking a statin. And it better not be because you have a cholesterol of 220 without knowing your numbers. I'm just telling you, you've got to dig into this because you need to know what you're getting into. So the second question that you need to be having this conversation is around whether I need to be on a statin or not. This is profoundly important. So the first thing you'll know is your numbers. The next thing you need to know is, okay, so my numbers are off. Do I need a statin? And that's the conversation you need to have with your doc. The last conversation I really want you to have with your doc is around this idea of dietary cholesterol versus what you make and how those two things really affect your overall cholesterol levels. And I'm here to tell you that we could talk about this for a long time, but I'm valuing your time. I'm trying to get you in and out of the show as quick as possible with the most important points. But here's the, here's the big take home point. The number one driver of cholesterol production in the liver is something called insulin. If you're diabetic, you might already be on insulin. I don't know one diabetic who doesn't have high levels of cholesterol. That's because their liver is overproducing it because of insulin. This is a big deal. And if you're not diabetic and you have high cholesterol, it's not because you're eating too much dietary bacon. What's happening is, is that you're eating too many things that raise your blood sugar. And it's that elevated blood sugar that triggers an insulin response that not only lowers the blood sugar, but it hits the liver and causes an increased production of cholesterol. So when you're eating a plate of biscuits and bacon, it is definitely affecting your cholesterol, but it's not the bacon, it's the biscuits. We have a biscuit problem, not a bacon problem. This is the answer to the first question I asked. How is it that we could be eating less dietary cholesterol than we ever have in human history, but yet our numbers are through the roof of both stroke and heart disease. It's because we eat so many things. Because we're afraid of fat, we take refuge in things that raise our blood sugar, which causes a super high insulin level, which is constantly hitting our liver, producing too much cholesterol. Meanwhile, bacon's taking the blame. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this show. I hope it was really valuable for you. I know that some of these topics may be new, but they might be confirming to things that you're hearing about. A lot of this information is starting to get out into the world, uh, which excites me because you can only hold truth down for so long. Um, please leave your comments uh, in the notes, uh, in, in the comments section. Please um, let us know if you liked it. If there's any other topics that you would like to have discussions around or you'd like to hear more about. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our show. Um, it means a lot and it would absolutely mean the world to me if you left a review on both iTunes or YouTube, wherever you're watching this or listening to this. And until our paths cross again, I hope that you find a way to have these conversations with your doctor. Until we meet again, talk soon. Hey everybody, thanks again for watching the show. I'm sure it goes without saying, but I feel compelled to share with you. Obviously I wanna help uh, as many people as possible. Um, but before you make any medical changes, please, please consult with your physician. Don't do any of this on your own. Um, you don't want to put yourself in any harm's way. And um, again, thanks a bunch for watching the show. If you have any questions or comments, again, please leave them and we'll get back to you. Take care.